Hello my soccer universe. I guess the only way to really get everything out to you in time is to shoot right after the game's ended and then go and take a good night's rest. Boy, we had the first shocker today. We a uh, real shocker, then we had two snoozers and then we had actually a rather enjoyable performance by the defending champions France, who I decided to wear because I gave Saudi Arabia A the do in two of the one minute videos I did and also I only have one Saudi Arabia shirt and I need them back there. Again, if you haven't seen my previous uh, vi video, I try to put the matches that we will be talking about behind me and then on the other side you see how the favorites at this very moment and yeah, Argentina not in there any, any anymore. Before we talk about these two, uh, uh, these four matches actually, and I want to go with first Group C and then Group D, just quick points on what I said um, in the morning in the early review, because uh, a few things have been alleviated. I said that we don't see any indication of what jersey colors are there. Now they put those little dots in there. They admittedly don't look very thought out because they're just put in there, but at least we have them there. So now uh, if you look closely enough you can make out which team wears which color which is great so FIFA fixed that one one of the few issues that they can fix and another thing I want to mention is you know uh, Denmark also did not wear the one love armband because the federation spanned it together again to me it is not about the players here uh, the players want to be successful and you know I don't want to damn Harry Kane or uh, Simon Kier or whoever they are for not wearing the arm and just because the federation is there but I think that the federation should have stepped up a little bit stronger and there's especially big discussions at the moment in Germany on that where they're saying well I think it's time to come home and not even play in the World Cup which is of course also ludicrous in a way again like Iran if you want to make a protest, you got to pay a little bit for that. And I still think that if the Federation sh should have uh, stood, if the Federations would have stood strong, and I say it again, Harry Kane kneeling with the armband, getting a yellow card, that would have been a picture. But let's rest that. Let's go uh, into the games today. And I mean, the early game. Uh, you know, it's hard to follow those or those, uh, the first three games if you have a job and work to do. You know, I have it on, I listen, I see the highlights here, 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 there. Sometimes I'm in the car. So, yeah, what I could gather is that Argentina in the first half had the game more or less under control. However, I already said it in the one minute video. The problem is that Messi missed already um, an early shot where uh, the keeper. And now I need to get him, uh, I get him uh, right, because he was actually quite uh, outstanding in there. Al Ovais made a great save. Then Argentina get an admittedly soft penalty. Uh, seemingly, you know, for Harry Maguire that didn't give the penalty this, this time we gave it. I thought it was soft. Messi converts in the 10th minute and everyone thinks, oh, it is all fine and smooth sailing for Argentina from here on. It was anything but because um, Saudi Arabia pressed him with a high line and Scaloni could not react to that. And so Saudi Arabia was always dangerous. Now, my first wow moment is, I mean, uh, you heard from the beginning the Argentinian fans, blah, blah, blah. As soon as they came to the national anthem, it was pretty clear. This is a partisan crowd, gr crowd firmly behind Saudi Arabia. There are so many Saudi fans. There's the Lusail Stadium, of course, the one where the final will be played. That will play against Argentina for sure. And this will boost some of the Arab teams as we saw to also today with Argentina. Uh, no, with Argentina, with Tunisia. Uh, I'm tired, so I'm going to make some mistakes <laughs> talking. <laughs> um, so that was one thing. The other thing is, I knew passively that Hervé Renard is the coach for Saudi Arabia. As soon as I saw him there on the sideline, I thought, oh, this is a, this is a good coach. He has done wonders with African nations and for national teams. And then most of the Saudi players know each other from club teams, Al-Hilal, as far as I know. So it does not apply to them what applies, for instance, for the Argentina squad, which are just cobbled together and they still need to find themselves because they had such a small preparation period. And you could see that the Saudi Arabia had a plan. Now, if Argentina does not 
get offside seven times in the first half, have three goals disallowed for offside. And I have to say the Lautaro Martinez goal that has actually been given. And then you see this just the upper arm offside. That was the one that's maybe a little bit hard to take because this is so hard for the player to adjust for. But okay, that's the rule. If Argentina go with a 2 nil in the half, I don't think a Saudi Arabia will come back. However, they did not. And you could already see that the longer the game went on, already in the first half, the less Argentina, I mean, yes, they were dangerous, but the less they actually did uh, for the game. And you could see the, um, that there might be troubles. And this is probably what they addressed at the half. And in very short succession, Al Shekri uh, gets an equalizer. And then Al uh, Devazari. I think that's the name that we'll hear again. Brilliant individual effort after a shot came already off the crossbar. He wiggles through three Argentinian defenders and then unleashes a great shot. 2-1 Saudi Arabia. Argentina tried to come back. They had a few headers where there was not enough pressure there. There were a few goal line clearances. And again, goalie Al Ovais was outstanding. The graphic I put up there with all the goals and the yellow cards and other notable examples it tells the story of, of the game. The first half was all about Argentina being offside. Second half, it was uh, first Saudi Arabia scoring and then them hanging, hanging on, getting a few ye ye yellow cards. The Argentinian players also with some fair play issues. It was a big upset. Now, the question is, will this, I mean, this is, every tournament has a game where it goes boom and you have this huge upset and uh, will the, is a favorite now in clear danger. Spain 2010 was not, I mean, yes, initially they were in danger, uh, but you know, if I look especially at what happened in the second game, I still think Argentina is better than those two teams, Mexico and Poland, respectively. Uh, so Argentina may, may, may make it out of the group, but it will be crucial for them actually to win the group. Although, if you see the projection afterwards, uh, it will be really, really interesting, uh, to say the least. Um, it's either a wake-up call or, like Germany four years ago, it might be be a sign of things to come although Germany as I said I also have, have to say it was a very um, the way they got eliminated by South Korea this was two stoppage time goals a game they completely controlled so hold your horses we gotta see uh, and for Saudi Arabia big things are to come I think this is a team and I had a hunch that one of the Arabian teams will be do really, really well maybe it's also Saudi Arabia let's see how it move, goes moving forward. The most disappointing thing is that then the late afternoon game between Mexico and Poland with Saudi Arabia winning, those two teams could not afford a draw because you you need to get then something off Argentina. And this is an Argentina team that either will crumble or will be extremely, and I mean extremely pissed off and will take the sword to them. That this was such a drab draw. Mexico controlling game largely better. However, uh, Lewandowski missed a penalty on the stupid challenge. And uh, yes, Ochoa saved that that that, that one. Uh, and I think late on, I thought the Poland was a little bit better. But overall, over the entirety of the game, Mexico was slightly better. But it was not a great game. It was a boring game. And it doesn't make any sense to me. I want to move over to uh, the next group um, where. Group D, Denmark and Tunisia. Uh, I don't know. To me, this seemed a little bit more entertaining than Mexico, Poland, uh, and especially Tunisia. I mean, Denmark uh, tried to as uh, assume control, but they looked a little bit in trouble, a little bit unsettled with everything. Whereas Tunisia roared on by a major crowd. Yes, they're leaving many Tunisians in Qatar, and there are many Tunisians also visiting. They had a real partisan support. Uh, and they had their chances and they probably could have could have if not should have take, taken the lead um so i always felt that tunisia is a little bit more dangerous for the majority of the game while then Denmark was controlling only late on denmark had a few good chances but again it was a nil nil draw and the writing was on the wall in in, in a way that a nil nil was going to happen so the entire afternoon was nil nil a little bit of a letdown however leave it to the world champions to actually give us a little bit uh, the funny thing is I shot an unpacking video that you will see probably either uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow 
where France were one nil down, and I mentioned that in the video. Just a note to <laughs> to you guys uh, when this happened. Uh, I talked to Idris before I wished him good luck for France and so on. I said, oh, I'm so more, more mortified that the <laughs> ninth minute uh, Goodwin gives Australia the lead. And in addition, Lucas Hernandez is uh, injured and I don't know at this point uh, whether it's a lengthy injury or not. But his brother Theo comes on and now we have two million players up front. This can only end good. And uh, France were rattled a little bit but composed themselves and they get the equalizer through um, Rabio assisted by Theo and then Rabio assists Giroud who is then one goal away from tying uh, I think it's Thierry Henry who has the most goals for France uh, to make it 2-1 in the 30 seconds so it went then really 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 fast and then France really had control over the game I have to mention the jersey matchup at the last World Cup. We had the same opener for France, where uh, it was France all in blue and uh, Australia, I think, all all in yellow. Maybe with green pants, but I think it was all yellow. Doesn't it look glorious when they look when they play both in the first uh, jerseys? It's a uh, first kit. This was one of the best. This will be one of the best match matches of of the entire World Cup. I mean, both teams in tricolor colors. Australia with a look the. Pr Potentially Brazil actually should show should have, although I don't mind Brazil with, with the blue. It looked glorious. It absolutely looked glorious. And France looked, I don't want to say um, super convincing, however, rather professional, taking the time and, and creating chances. And as soon as Theo or Mbappé uh, give a little bit of speed to the attack, uh, it looked actually quite dangerous and it was just too much for Australia, who are one of the few teams where I have a feeling they should not be at this World Cup. Dembele, Mbappé makes a shot that goes far out, Dembele gets that one, puts it in, Mbappé heads it in 66 and then a few minutes later, again Giroud, like it at the first goal, uh, heads in a Mbappé cross and now he's the record holder and you could see it meant a whole lot for them. I am very happy for Giroud. And again, damn fine jersey, that one. So yeah, that ends uh, the action for today. We have the standings at the Saudi Arabia, top of the group, Argentina, bottom. However, you see that Argentina still is among the favorites moving on to the next stage. Uh, having a slight cold, so, uh, so sorry for that. Whereas France, very, very clear and very decisively. Yes, this was the weakest opponent probably in this group, but uh, looking uh, good overall. For projected standings, uh, the big surprise is that Saudi Arabia is now projected to stay top of the group. And that may well happen, but it's it's tight at the moment, whereas not much has changed in Group D, although Austra uh, Tunisia is now ahead of Australia. But uh, what this also means, that Saudi Arabia top and Argentina bottom, is we have a, the first major change to the projected bracket. And before I show this bracket, because it is nonsensical in many ways, the bracket means that I take the projected group standings and the ratings that I have here and then the best team goes on. Let me show you. So far we had a Brazil-Argentina semi-final. Now we have a Brazil-Argentina final because Argentina is now in second place and still being rated the second best team. Uh, However, it, it, it's a little bit madness to assume that we would still get France against Argentina, uh, which I had in a way, but I had it the other way around, that France finished second in the group and Argentina finished uh, first. Uh, it actually takes the weight of the upper half, if it's this way, and puts it more on this France, Argentina, England, Ecuador uh, bracket here. And there's also a Germany and a Portugal in there. So suddenly, you know, it's a little bit more even. But I think it actually works out quite nicely. Uh, the Netherlands would make it now to the semi-final against Brazil, who go over Spain. Because Denmark will probably beat Saudi Arabia, although I wouldn't think so, the way Saudi Arabia was playing. And we will get a final between the two best teams. Of course, Brazil still very much the favorite, but we have to see them. And a very interesting third place matchup between uh, the Netherlands and Belgium, which Belgium will is slated to win. However, the, uh, the Netherlands have beaten Belgium twice this year already. As for the favorites, and here you really see the impact of Argentina's loss. They go from second to seventh. France and Spain now moving up. England stay put in fourth place, and Belgium and the Netherlands moving also up. Few changes down, but they are so mini minuscule that I don't even want to mention them. And then we have uh, the games 
uh, the next CSSF games, we have Morocco, Morocco, Croatia, the first game. Uh, I saw more, uh, Croatia will play in the first uh, jersey, which is a little bit surprising. I expect many Moroccan fans there. We get a first look at Germany with all the unrest around them. Spain against Costa Rica and Belgium, Canada, I think could be a fun game. In any case, that's it from me for what happened uh, at the World Cup today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!